everybody. Welcome to No Story is Sacred. If you've never listened before, basically we're four siblings who grew up talking about the art of storytelling. Now that we're adults, we're still talking about it, and we're inviting you to join the conversation. I'm Pippin, and I want to take a moment to think of just flexibility, love, and trust. I'm Alex, and here comes a thought. Okay. <gasps> nice. Man, if we were really good, we would have thought to switch those around. Um, yeah. So today, uh, it's actually just two siblings talking. Alex and I have broken free from the chains of our older siblings. We're taking over. The ship is ours. We're heading to the planet of Aurea. <laughs> that joke is for 12 people. <laughs> yeah, Cat and Bren couldn't be here. Maybe we locked them up in towers somewhere. You don't know. And instead of talking about Tangled like we said we were, we're going to talk about the cartoon series Steven Universe, because no one's here to stop us. So spoilers abound. <laughs> <laughs> if you want specific content warnings about things we may talk about, check out the show notes on NoStoryIsSacred.com. For those of you who've never watched Steven Universe, the summary according to Google is, The Crystal Gems are a team of magical beings who are the self-appointed guardians of the universe. Half-human, half-gem hero Steven is the little brother of the group. The goofball is learning to save the world using the magical powers that come from his belly button, and he goes on magical adventures with the rest of the Crystal Gems, even though he's not as powerful, or smart, as fellow group members Garnet, Amethyst, and Pearl. Despite his shortcomings, Steven usually finds a surprising way to save the day. That summary is rude as fuck. Yeah. Also, he's like... He doesn't have the, the book learning of, of the gems, even though you can't really call it book learning since it's preloaded in, into them. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't think the gems have the book learning of the gems. Yeah. But but he does have his street smarts. He's wise beyond his years. He knows to pack a sweater. Yeah. Yeah, he does. He's got emotional intelligence, <laughs> unlike some other gems who will remain pearl. <laughs> Ooh. That's unfair to Pearl. She's learning. <laughs> yeah. And it's really not her, her fault that, that she's mostly comprised of, of tears and salt. Fair, fair. I was going to say she's mostly made of anxiety. Uh, oh, and trauma. Don't forget, loads of trauma. So much trauma. So uh, I feel like a uh, another fair description, uh, an, an equally fair description of Steven Universe uh, he's a frozen treat from an, with an all-new taste, because he came from this planet from outer space. A refugee of an interstellar war, but now he's in your local grocery store. Cookie Cat, he's a pet for your tummy. Cookie Cat, he's super duper yummy. Cookie Cat, he left his family behind. <laughs> Cookie Cat, we, oh, I feel like this is off the rails already. Let's just keep careening in towards that cliff, Pep. Woo! <laughs> oh, gosh. Also, that started the first uh, summary. He had uh, hmm. self-appointed guardians of the universe. Yeah, they're not really guarding the universe. They are mostly <laughs> guarding the world and actually really mostly their town. And really, even then, mostly just their house. Yeah. I mean, it's revealed in flashbacks that the gems were really isolationist. They had a fence with a sign. Yeah, yeah saying, keep out. And did people listen? So, wait, okay, I feel like we need a summary, an actual summary of Steven Universe. Uh, shall we do it ourselves? Or, uh... Yeah. Yeah. So... I don't trust the internet anymore. Not after that little brother of the group comment. <laughs> well, he's kind of the little, little brother of Amethyst. True. True. But that's pretty much where that metaphor ends. Yeah, it's where it falls apart. Because... <laughs> uh, uh, a family can be four moms uh, and a child who's also one of the moms. Yeah. Which, if you've watched Steven Universe, is a sentence that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Let's actually get to the summary here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Steven Universe doesn't have a belly button, because where his belly button should be is a gem. For Steven, it is half gem. That's where the summary was right. He's half gen, half human, because his mother was an alien. Dun dun dun. Also, that's a, a like what mi mid season one reveal. Is it? No, actually, when did it? When was it revealed that they were aliens? I mean, I feel. <laughs> I, 
that pretty early on in the first episode when the thing from space was coming. Oh, yeah. And they were clearly the outliers of Earth. True, true. Let's get your mom's old <laughs> cannon weapon, which, by the way, is never explained it again. And we see it again some, sometimes. Sure. Did Bismuth make it? Bismuth must have made it. She probably made it. I mean, they're yeah. cannons. With the rose emblem. Yeah. So, and Rose... Uh, oh, yeah, his mom's name is Rose. Rose, rose Quartz. Quartz. And he is Stephen Quartz Universe. Is it that canon? Probably. Oh, cool. <laughs> So, uh, his mom was a freedom fighter, a rebellion leader, who back when her people, the gems, tried to take over the earth and turn it into a gem world and therefore wipe out life on earth. She looked at life on earth and went, wait a second, this is fucking rad, and led the rebellion to get the gems off of earth. There was a whole big, uh, gem war. Yep. Which was a, I'm going to say, uh, Fyrick victory, uh, having no clue if that's how it's pronounced. I think it's uh, pronounced Fyrick. Py- Fyrick? Fyrick. Uh, uh, besides the point. Pyrrhic. <laughs> it's a Pyrrhic vi- victory, says Google. <laughs> so I'm not sure if she'd argue that because the definition says one at too great a cost to have been worthwhile to the, for the victor. Um, and technically they did all, get off the gems off of Earth, but destroyed the entire Rebellion army in the process. Yep. So that there were only four gems left who were whole, and the rest of the Rebellion army were either killed or corrupted and turned into monsters. Yeah, it was a big deal. Big reveal. Well, actually, for the first half of uh, Season 1, we were given no explanation about what the monsters are, just that, that they, too, have gems. And like, huh. That's a thing, but not, but we're not going to think about it. Yeah, you, you. At least I almost believe that it was just a natural part of this Earth. Yeah, and from a certain point of view, it is, I guess. Hmm. But yeah, no. And so yes, yeah. And in Ocean Gem, there it was the big reveal, and that was just like, oh man, that's deep. And it's being said, well, well, Pearl is driving Stephen da- Stephen Stad's van. Into the ocean, which has dried up. It happens. <laughs> it's more likely than you think. And so throughout the series, we learn more about what happened in this war, uh, Stephen's mom's place in it, and the remaining three gems uh, after Stephen's mom uh, dies, uh, because she had to give... <laughs> Stay with me here. She had to give up her physical form uh, to create Stephen. Uh, so Stephen is also his own mother, because he's got her gem. Yep. It becomes a huge identity issue. Oh, yeah. This this in no way causes him a great emotional distress. Am I my mom? <laughs> yeah. And the other three men in good gems, sure, three, uh, are Amethyst, who was created on Earth, because gems are created out of the Earth, sort of. There is Pearl, uh, who was at Rose's side from the start. Yep. Uh, and there is Garnet, who is the cool one. <laughs> and the sort of leader after Rose passed. Yeah. Uh, there's also Stephen's dad, Greg Universe, who is a great guy. Yep. Uh, used to be in a band, which is how he met Stephen's mom. Uh, band being himself. <laughs> hey. He's great. If we can, if we can call Brendan Yuri "Panic at the Disco," then we can call Craig Universe a band. <laughs> it's a lot about growing up and your identity and making friends and having relationships. Oh yeah, relationships is a big, big part of it. There, there's a whole entire. Uh, uh, what what what's the word term to use? Like, uh, what's a physical object that's symbolic, or physical person, or physical? Got it. Alleg- <laughs> allegory, uh, anthropomorphic. No. Basically, gems have the ability to fuse together to form new, new people, basically. They do it through dance. Because yep. the show is amazing. One and gem plus two gem equals giant woman. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, and they and they grow and they get new powers when they become this new person. And earlier, spoiler alert again. I remember when I don't remember when this room was revealed. I watched after. I remember when and, uh, this was still it was still being debated. <laughs> Uh, but when I said earlier that there were three gems left after Rose passed, technically there's four, because Garnet is a fusion of two gems, Ruby and Sapphire, uh, and they're in love, and it's adorable. And whenever they're unfused, they flirt like nobody's business. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> Why is she a cowboy? <laughs> <laughs> Sapphire can see the future, so Garnet can see the future. Sometimes this causes her distress. Most of the time, it just makes her cool. Yep, yep. And that that fusion is a representation of one relationship. Steven fuses with his best human friend because uh, he's just magic that way. Uh, and Connie's just too cool for this. Yep, yep. Uh, and that is a representation of uh, a very deep friendship. Steven can fuse with uh, Amethyst, and that's uh, their sort of familial relationship. And you can only really fuse with someone if you have that relationship. Otherwise, it just breaks down. Well, uh, there have been other characters who attempted. Oh, and sh- the show does a really great representation of abusive relationships. Oh, yeah. Through fusion. Oh, yeah. Uh, and wanting to be part of that relationship, even though you know that it hurts you, and trying and you're stepping away from it, even though it makes you feel good, because it also hurts you. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's so good. And the show's about recovering from trauma and moving on after after that trauma. Yeah. And, you know, again, identity and relationships. And it's just a really good show. Uh, and everyone should watch it. <laughs> and it has good music. That too. That too. And recently, it has just finished its uh, fifth season. Yeah, this is a really good place to, you know, sort of binge it and get to that end. Yeah. Um, there's expected. Do we know yet if? I, I, yeah, there, yeah, there's going to be a few more seasons. They've been ordered, and there's a movie. Like, I am so interested in where it's going to go from here. Yeah, because that was pretty much uh, an end. That's why I had so many emotions during it because I was like, "Oh gosh, is this is the end? Oh man!" Yeah, and it felt like an end where I would be okay with it if this was the end. Yeah. Steven Universe also oh, is very, very much into the, the uh, you know, finding a uh, pacifistic alternative to a... Uh, to conflict. Yeah. Because, you know, the gem race you know, is kind of, you know, space tyranny. Just a little bit of space tyranny. But also how Steven's always willing to make an enemy a friend. He doesn't believe in the bad part of people. Oh, yeah. You know, if someone's not listening, yo, know, maybe he's not coming at it the right way. He'll find a new an- avenue of talking to someone about it. Yeah. And it doesn't mean that he, you know, lets them um, uh, do whatever they want. He will. Uh, oh, he'll fight if he has to. He has a shield. He has a bubble that sometimes has spikes. So, you know how sometimes there's that Tumblr discourse about how uh, Captain America's signature thing is a shield because he'll defend people. Steven's shield is literally a part of him. Oh, yeah. Uh, and he uses it multiple times to protect his friends. Mm. He gets his mom's sword and he gives it to his not-girlfriend. Yep. And it's it's just great. You know, he just tries so hard to understand. And he he does. When he, when people just finally talk to him, he's like, hey, what's wrong? And really, if this show is teaching children how to behave, great. Oh, yeah. Because the more of the story is to listen to other people when they say they're in pain, that's amazing. Mm. And he does, you know, go to confront this, the space tyranny, going, hey, you did a bad thing. You need to undo it and possibly also stop uh, stop continuing your bad stuff, you know. Look how you are affecting the people around you. Look how it's affecting you. Yes! Oh my god. Oh, just that whole scene. I don't want to say too much, just in case people haven't finished it. 
Because I know we say spoilers bound. Yeah, uh, we're, we've been dancing around one of the big, the big, big spoiler. Because, because I don't want to take away the emotional punch. Oh, yeah. Because it's so beautiful. It's so, I, I wanted to cry. Uh, it was just, I, oh, I need to rewatch it. Next time we're together, we should just watch that together. Oh, yeah. But no, uh, oh, one of the things I appreciate about Steven Universe was, um, the amount of conspiracy theories. Oh, yeah. That could flow around it because the world building uh, was so great that you could see things coming and, but at the same time, not expect it. Oh, yeah. Like, uh, going back to the, uh, Garnet spoiler, uh, <laughs> the one spoiler we are willing to <laughs> actually really say. Yeah. Like, it was being theorized that, that they were a fusion, like, for a while. And, uh, like, there were people doing freeze frames of Alexandrite uh, defusing. Alexandrite is a fusion of Pearl, Amethyst, and uh, Garnet. She's really big. She's got this mask thing and fangs. Two mouths. <laughs> and really, all I want to do is see you turn into a giant woman. Yep. A giant. But no, uh, when they defused for about a frame, you can see the shapes of Ruby and Sapphire holding hands and fuse in order to fuse back together right that instant. Yeah, because they, they unfuse and they're just pretty much light before they all fa- fall back into their original forms. Yeah. And I saw that freeze frame and I was like, how could I? Because I started watching after... It had been revealed that Garnet was a fusion. Yeah. And I had been spoiled for it because the entire internet went insane about it. <laughs> if you haven't seen it, Google Stronger Than You, because it's amazing. I sort of saw the remnants of the internet war. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that had happened around if Garnet was a fusion. <laughs> because people were fighting about it. They were like, no, this it's not actually a thing. Y'all are crazy conspiracy theorists. Uh, and I saw that freeze frame. I was like, how can anyone not believe that she was a fusion after that? And afterwards, there were some who were being snooty about it. Oh, yeah. Don't be snooty when you're right about something. Yeah. Yeah. No. Uh, Steven would think you're an asshole if you do that. Oh, uh, he wouldn't think you're an asshole. No, he'd just think you're being mean. He'd make it. He'd make that judgy face. Yeah. And you'd feel bad about yourself. Yeah, there's only really one person and he, he really hates. And that's Kevin. 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 And even then, he's kind of cooled down on Kevin. Mm. Mainly because he realized that uh, he doesn't need, need to uh, deal with Kevin's shit. I'm sorry, I got distracted by the phrase snake people or sneeple. Ha 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 You may hear him mock Ronaldo for being, you know, Ronaldo. But he was the deliverer of many, uh, truths about the, uh, about the world. Yeah, Ronaldo was the town's local conspiracy theorist. So he'd say things like, uh, the, the earth is controlled by rock people, uh, and the gems would be over on the side going, I mean, but not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Keep Beach be City weird. But yeah, it's, oh, you guys, y'all for reals, you need to watch Steven Universe. Oh yeah. It just, it just makes me so happy. It's also got really great, uh, LGBT representation because Garnet, the fusion, well, the gems in general are coded as female. You can, you can, and the internet has debated on whether they're actually women or not. Yeah, because because they're space rocks. Yeah, <laughs> Rose Quartz had to shapeshift <laughs> in order to uh, have Stephen. Yeah, um, she was shapeshifting for like nine months. But yeah, whether or not they were actually women or not, they are coded as such. Uh, and I will take my representation where I can. Oh, yeah. So, Sapphire and Garnet... Sapphire and Garnet... Sapphire and Ruby are Garnet. Uh, they are in love with each other. In, in a lesbian relationship where they're constantly around each other because they like each other that fucking much. Oh, yeah. Rose Quartz was by, I'm going to say it, uh, because she had something going on with Pearl, and then she had, you know, her thing with Mystery Universe. Oh, yeah. And Steven, when he fuses with his friend Connie... The person that they create, uh, which is a really weird phrase to say, but the new person that they are is Stavani, who is non-binary. Yeah, canonically. Uh, they use they, them pronouns. They uh, are fairly androgynous. Uh, and they're, they're just awesome. They are so cool. I love Stavani so much. Oh, yeah. And yeah, it's it runs the gamut. And it also covers some mental health issues because 
Pearl is again made of anxiety mm. and the and the overcoming of trauma because the gems live for millennia and the gem war only ended uh six thousand years ago. Six thousand years ago, which for a gem's lifetime is not that long. Oh no. And Rose Quartz died fourteen years ago. Yeah, yeah. So from a gem's point of view, she died like yesterday. <laughs> oh yeah, she's that's a very still very much fresh. <laughs> so it's overcoming the trauma of of losing a loved one, hmm. uh, and we see that in the gems. We see that in Greg Universe, who's has a human lifespan, so he's a bit more equipped to deal with that. Yeah, though still clearly missing her all the time. And we have Stephen, who never knew her, oh, yeah. and having to deal with that, and then starts learning about her, which is not always a uh, good the things he learns. Because not only does he have to deal with um, his family's grief over her, he also has to learn that this person who is really up on a pedestal, he has to learn that she had flaws. And some fairly big ones, and... Like, the stuff you'd expect, that, you know, a rebellion leader to have. Yeah, but it's just, like, the trouble any child has realizing that their parents are human. Yeah. And going, shit, you've done stuff that I don't like, or that I disapprove of. Or maybe even stuff that directly harmed me. Yeah, like, how can I idolize you when you're, or, you know, kind of a huge hypocrite? Yeah. So finding out that your, your dead parent... Has a f- has feet of clay. Oh yeah, nice use of, use of expression there. <laughs> right, right. Super proud of myself. <laughs> and so there's all this stuff about growing up, and oh, it's such a good show. <laughs> I love it so much. Yeah, that is, of course, her not saying that it doesn't have its. Uh, just like Ra, who's having her flaws, the show itself also has its own flaws. You shut your mouth. Are we actually equipped to discuss the? Business uh, situation. Oh, uh, yeah. Business could have been handled better. Yeah. I mean, I'm not sure I'm equipped to handle the business situation. Yeah. Uh, I feel like they tried to fix it. Yeah. And I got the feeling when I was, uh, when I watched it then that, that this is something that uh, ha- is going to happen over multiple episodes. It isn't the end of it, but, uh, also, just, in it's a hope it took too long to resolve. Mm. I also wonder how much of it was getting uh, the availability of the voice actress. True. Though, all that being said, if, for, tell me if I'm, I'm remembering the situation wrong. The thing with Bismuth is that uh, she was voiced by an African-American actress, uh, Uzo Aduba, of Orange is the New Black fame. Uh, and she was, she was coded as a, a black person, uh, even though she was a space rock and more sort of purple. With rainbow hair, because she's amazing. Yeah. When she is introduced, she has legitimate concerns. And she sort of devolves and sort of into this sort of very angry, violent person. And then she, she had been sort of imprisoned, and she gets imprisoned again. And having that be a character uh, coded as black is deeply problematic. Yeah. To put it very simply. Yeah. And, spoiler alert, uh, Bismuth does come back, and a lot of her stuff is resolved. Kind of quickly. But, yeah, it, it's sort of rushed. Yeah. Yeah, and as to white people, we can recognize the pro- problematic nature of this, but uh, I'm not sure we have the... we've. I'm not sure we've educated ourselves enough about it to bring a really strong criticism of it, other than recognizing that it is a thing that can be criticized. Yeah. Uh, and should be uh, examined. Yeah. The business is awesome. Oh, yeah. I mean, she comes with puns. Yeah, she does. <laughs> and Stephen called out the rule of three. <laughs> Did he? Yeah, yeah. Uh, now we really mean business. Yeah. And he's like, oh, oh, man, it's going to be awesome when she says it a third time. It's true. <laughs> now, now we really mean business. <laughs> Classic. Yeah. And then it, the third time it happens, it's uh, medicine. <laughs> yeah. And that's why the show is amazing. Yeah. All right, so we've gone on a little bit. Oh, man, Brent's going to kill us. <laughs> we love you, man. We really do. We're sorry. In my defense, I'm sick. So, really, I'm just going to throw oh, Pip under the bus here. Wow, fucking rude. All right, so so I think I think at that's, this point we're supposed to do our story changes, even though I've already said that it's perfect. Yeah, so 
Do you want to go? God. Here's the thing. Here are my usual things I fall back on. Make it queer. It's already queer. Yeah. Or gender swap. But they're all already women, for the most part. <laughs> and Stephen himself is uh, very comfortable with himself. Yeah, and I, I, I'm I, okay with this male character uh, who's uh, okay with the fem- feminine aspects of himself and have strong female role models to roam his to model himself after. I'm sure that sentence went great. Stephen at one point like wears a dress and heels and glitter and sings on stage. And he's still like, yeah, no, I'm a boy. I just looked real cute. Yeah. Also, Peridot is the best. I was going to say, if I could change anything, or maybe not even change, what I'd like more of is the relationship between Peridot and uh, Lapis. Yeah. Uh, Lapis Lazuli. Yeah. Uh, quick aside, hey, hey listeners, uh, Pera and Lazuli are two gems who are introduced later on in later in the series. Pera is initially introduced as a uh, antagonist who, who arrives on a ship shaped like a hand, equipped with a giant laser. As one does, and she shoots them. Yeah, Pera's great. And then Stephen talks to her, and she learns more about how great Earth is. Uh, and she calls Pelopone a clod. Indeed, and then he gets into Phantom. That's why I love Pera, really. So yeah. Wh- what I really want, I think, is more more stuff with Lapis and Peridot and more of their fish out of water learning uh, how Earth works. Again, overcoming their own trauma. Yeah. And making a home for themselves. Because we've seen the gems, how they've done it uh, after a few millennia. Whereas Lapis and Peridot are just starting out. Yeah. And the most they have is Camp Binding Hearts. <laughs> Which is an in university TV show that they write fanfic for. <laughs> Would you want to hunt uh, a Peridot and Lapis in the big city? Yes. <laughs> See, part of me was all like, I like them just out in their bar and just making a home for themselves. And just making their bleep blorps. Their art. Meat morps. Meat morps, I'm sorry. I I'm, I'm was wrong. But no, you're right. Them having to deal with the fucking city? Gold. What is this red? No one told them life was gonna be this way. Oh, <laughs> uh, we have to. Yeah, no, we have to pay for the internet. Oh yeah, no, they're not gonna pay for the internet. Peridot has a way around that. True. Stephen's actually probably just gonna get them a condo or something. <laughs> Ask his dad to get them a condo. <laughs> get randomly in a, uh, I think season three or four. Uh, Stephen's dad became rich because uh, his his old manager was withhold, withholding royalties. Whoops, I told you he was in a band. Yeah, I think I just want more Lapis and Peridot. And I feel like I should be able to predict what's going to happen next and say that. But one, I'm again avoiding those big spoilers at the end because I don't want to take that from people. Mm. Uh, and two, I have no clue what's going to happen next. Well, there's that one theory. Because gems are inorganic. So... Space rocks. Yep, yep. yep. And the way they're uh, created is not natural. Mm -hmm. Uh, So there's one theory that gems were a uh, artificially created species. Uh Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. And so, you know, the next theory is like, who created them or what were they created for? And... I am more intrigued by that second question. Yeah. And like... Also, why have that super weapon? BT Dubs, there's a super weapon. <laughs> it's a science fiction fantasy show. Of course there's a super weapon. Yeah. So, you know, there, there's a the fear of that going around. But we'll we'll just have to see. Because, yeah. to be fair, the gems kind of do seem to have space dominance. But also... Seem to. Yeah. Also, the universe is infinite. Well... Is it infinite? I don't know, man. Don't bring science into this. I mean, for our purposes, it is. I mean, we're never going to reach the end of it, but... Not with that attitude. True. (laughs) I mean, I I I have a a dinner reservation at the end of the... the, At the restaurant at the end of the universe. Fair enough. That is a Douglas Adams reference to our folks. I'm very proud. I know. Wait, so I've done my change. It's your turn. Right. Okay. Uh, no, great reboots are lame. Uh, see, I can't do a fantasy uh, 
the what if because uh, they're magic. And at one point, probably did hang out at a, uh, a medieval court. Oh, man. Garnet in a rough. I mean, we did see them in, like, I want to say 1800s uh, dress. Sure. The, there was a... In that painting? Yeah, that painting. Yeah. Where they had to get the, a, a shark to pose. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's that, but nah, 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 no, nah. I've got it, I've got it, I've got it. We're doing the time warp. Let's do the time warp again. Yeah. Uh, like, we're starting from the beginning again, except this time, Stephen is in his 20s, and he's already he got his own place. Mm-hmm. So what I'm actually suggesting is, uh, Stephen just drops it into the crystal, <laughs> jumps his place, it's like a Kramer on, on, uh, on Seinfeld. <laughs> No, I don't know the tune to that riff. I tried, y'all. But yeah, <laughs> wacky hijinks, sitcom situations. Yep, yep, yep. Like, hey, I've got a shield thing. Actually, yeah, it all reads very different if he's 20. Yeah, yeah. Like, you could have, like, the exact same situations, too. Yeah, it just becomes a standard or chosen one uh, plot. You know, I have to go like, oh, oh, see the crystal gems for crystal training. Or gem training, I'm sorry. You know? Yeah. You know, maybe Pearl's a bit more standoffish with him. Oh. Yeah, that's that's really sad. But he gets Garnet more. Yeah. Yeah. And he and Amethyst are just the same. Pretty much. Actually, no, I'm not really liking this. It doesn't really add anything or do anything. It, it, it reads a bit different. So, maybe... Uh, so I've got a thing. I've got a thing. I think I've got a okay. thing. All right. So are you a, familiar with the uh, Bad Pearl AU? I'm vaguely familiar with the Bad Pearl AU. <sighs> yeah. Where, she's, where she wears a leather jacket. Yeah. In this one, it's during one of the episodes of the Steven Universe. Uh, Steven and, uh, ends up using accidentally using a time thing. That's literally what he calls it. And main timeline Thea, Stephen, learns a lesson about being true to himself by watching himself die. Good song. Right? Like, Stephen finds a time thing, and it allows him to go back into the past. And so what that Stephen does is, is uh, start grabbing past versions of himself to make a band. As one does. Yep. And uh, then they start fighting. Which is actually kind of out of character for Steven, but I kind of chalked it up to, to a time uh, time effects. I uh, know, I feel it weirdly poetic that the only person Steven can't get along with is himself. Right. Also, another potential thing about mental illness and uh, trauma of not liking yourself. True. No, uh, so what happened in all those other timelines that now don't have Steven? Oh, no. Yep, and that's where the bad Pearl AU comes from, because, you know, Pearl does not take it well. Oh, no. Yeah, she just tries to, uh, she's just off trying to find Steven wearing a leather jacket for reasons. <laughs> to be fair, I don't need a lot of reasons for that. Yeah. So, rather than doing the bad Pearl AU, I just actually want to examine the, uh, what happens in these worlds that are now steven Because, you know... The Earth technically not ha- has a uh, deadline, I, I would say. Yeah, I'm pretty certain that without Steven, the world ends. Yeah, which is, you know, dark. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. how do they deal with that? Oh, God, darn it. Oh, yeah. Her her, her, her thing is, is uh, time possibilities. Yeah. Uh, She's fine. She's well, fine. I, uh, I have a sad... Oh, what do you have? Kind of sad. Just general, or uh, do you have an idea, Sad? Well, in general, but you know how sometimes, you know, if if a couple loses a child... Oh, no. They don't stay together? Oh, no, no. Yeah, I have a Sad. Uh. Because if Garnet is the answer, then what's the question that leads to this? I don't know. I don't know, man. I don't know. It's too dark. It's too dark. No, uh... I, I actually do think that they'd find a way, because, you know, actually, no, without Steven, they wouldn't fall the marbles. Which is a sentence that makes sense. I need to rewatch the episode, because I don't remember the marbles. I don't remember how the time thing happens. We uh, did our research for this episode, but everyone. Was I supposed to rewatch five seasons of the TV series? Yes, Pip. Just like I watch, rewatched everything and definitely didn't watch uh, Umbrella Academy. <laughs> right. 
Uh, you, we, we both rewatched Steven Universe. In no way did one of us watch Umbrella Academy and one of us watch Critical Role. It's not what happened. We are professionals. We do our job. And actually, we don't get paid for this. God damn it. Right. So, uh. Do you think, do you think Kat and Bren get paid because they're older? Uh, I, I, I don't know. Oh, uh. Oh, man. I mean. We should unionize. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you know, you have to pay. The union dues, right? Yeah. No, uh, so enough riffing right there. Yes. Uh, no, I do think, uh, that they would be able to figure something out. And also because of time fluctuations, maybe the, the uh, maybe the cluster isn't done yet. Mm. Nah, nah. No, I, I think we're all ruined forever. True, true. So you know what that means? Dimension hopping. I am down for dimension hopping. Ah, uh, yeah, uh, so that's me, I guess. I do. I provided nothing and answered nothing, so hey. <gasps> uh, just like Rose Quartz. Um, oh. so, <laughs> Roseburn. So yeah, that, that's, that's Steven Universe. My job here is done, Sailor Moon. But you didn't. <laughs> you didn't do anything. Oh, <laughs> uh, oh, also, maybe I'd try to do something t- so I would hate Lars less, but I think my not liking him is half the point. Well, he. If he kind of like, you know, chills out once he, you know, uh, that happens. Yeah, towards the end, he sort of chills out. But I don't know, every time he still managed to do something to make me want to punch him in the face. But as a teen boy, I think that's the point. Yeah. <sighs> okay, so. So? You can totally play a game with just two people. Totally, totally. Uh, yeah, so uh, let's play uh, a special appearance by uh, what happens if a meta character uh, appears in the series. I'm going to go with uh, Agent Scully and Agent Mulder <laughs> from the X-Files. Because they've read uh, the blog, Keep Be- Beach City Weird, by Ronaldo. <laughs> and Mulder is very interested in this Sneeple theory. Uh, here's the thing. I'm fairly certain it's not really a conspiracy. I think it's actually just, it's actually kind of well known. Because the gems don't really hide what they are. They just don't really talk about it. But if it were well known, Ronaldo wouldn't be so him about it. True, true. So, Agent Mulder and, or an Agent Scully. Who do they interview first? Ronaldo. Yes, yes. Because uh, yeah, yeah, Ronaldo. Like, Mulder was like, I have this contact, and, and, and Scully said, like, <laughs> I met this kid on the internet. And Scully's like, Oh God, does he at least have an actual job? He works at his father's fry shack. Technically, that's a, it's something. It's something. <laughs> but no, and they go and they interview Ronaldo, who's just very Ronaldo about it. And Scully's about to be all like, "See, it's just another dead end." And then they like fucking see <laughs> Stephen and the Gems just walking down the street. <laughs> like Scully, uh, what color is are, are humans usually? It can vary widely. <laughs> but would you say that they're straight up purple? Not usually. Yeah. Yeah. And also that one is who just transformed into a cat. Oh god, cat fingers. <laughs> oh god. Sorry, sorry everyone. Uh I just remembered the scariest episode of Steven Universe. Steven Universe does not shy away from uh body horror. Cat fingers. But yeah. <laughs> and so just a whole episode of them trying to get information out of the gems, and the gems just being very confused as to why they're asking. This is fairly well known. I mean you're we're not really hiding it. We have an official uh, a decree from your government. Uh, what? I like. It goes so deep. Not really. It went through uh, the UPS. <laughs> uh, Jesus. But do you have any documentation? Well, no, I don't have a driver's license. They, they are illegal aliens. Um, uh, I just Pearl trying to to keep St- Stephen away from the strangers. <laughs> she she's heard about stranger danger. Yeah, yeah. Don't talk to them. I'm oh, Stephen. You don't know them. But he's got a cool jacket! Stephen, you can't trust everyone who has a cool jacket. Remember? You have a cool jacket. Let's not talk about that right now, Stephen. <laughs> uh, and Scully just being amazed at uh, Amphithus just continuing to eat everything. As a medical doctor, Scully is fascinated. Are you actually able to digest these? Nah. Eh. Uh, I remember that, uh, some cut storyboard where, uh, Amethyst teaches, uh, Peridot how to eat. 
whispers through the tune of shape-shifting a digestive track. <laughs> uh, okay, yeah, that's cool. That's cool. Yeah, yeah, beat that. Uh, <laughs> you know what? The gems say they're magic, but it's clearly the most hyper-advanced technology that, that looks like magic. So let's get some actual magic. Let's get some Harry Potter. Point of order. Do the gems say they're magic? I think only Steven says they're magic. All right. That's all I want to carry on. Yeah, yeah. Of my thing. It's Harry Potter. Oh, yeah. Okay. We're, 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 we're grooving. We're jiving. So. We're soaring. We're flying. We're flying. Actually, I'm changing it. It's now high school musical. I mean, Steven sings. Troy sings. They all sing. Oh, man. I mean, the... There's so there's relationship drama. Troy and Gabriella sing their "We're Gonna Break Up" song, and Stephen fucking fixes it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Ryan fixes Lars somehow. Uh, right. Okay. So Harry Potter. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Makes more sense. Does it though? Uh, Harry Potter. Uh, by the time the, the series starts, Harry Potter would now be what in it as a uh, in his thirties. Good question. Good question. He was 10 in the 90s. Well, no, he, he was in his uh, teens in the 90s. Yeah? Like, I'm not sure that it, it super matters for the point of this game, but he was born in 1980. Actually, yeah, so it doesn't actually matter. So so let's actually just keep uh, Harry Potter, the boy who lived. He's 39. Oh, wow. He's the... Uh... Or he's about to turn 39. I'm never sure. I just did the old-fashioned, you know, subtract thing. True. Without looking at you know time of year, yeah. Quick aside, All right, uh, cursed child. That was a that was weird. I have the screenplay. I keep meaning to read it. So, uh, anyways, anyways, anyways. Harry Potter. Uh, so the boy who lived, he's got powers. He's got magic. Stephen, he's got powers. He's got what can technically be called magic. So, it's, uh, uh, who's a uh, law? Was it like uh, about any? Any uh, sufficiently developed technology is indiscernible for magic. Um. But yeah, that's a thing. So, uh, yeah. As part of, you know, the Keep Harry Potter Safe initiative, in that time between when Harry Potter gets his, his uh, blood magic powers refill well, and actually going to Hogwarts, we need to why? Oh, yeah, uh, just, that's a sign. <laughs> just has to sign a caseworker. Jesus. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I bet. I think Garnet and McGonagall are old friends. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Miss Garnet. I cannot do it. Who, uh, McGonagall, I'm sorry. I'm too sick for it. I, I, I bet I could. I bet I could. Sure. If I was healthy, I could. I, I can do a lot of impressions. That is a guarantee, folks. Uh. Mm hmm, mm hmm. Sure, sure. But no, uh, old friends with, uh, with Garnet, yeah. Um, and of course, Dumbledore, her new rose. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They're both Machiavellian. They're both, uh, they're both really horrible at, uh, oh, telling people, oh, critical information that, uh, like, I get why it's secret at Dumbledore, but uh, there's a, uh, there's some point where we need that information yesterday. Yeah. I mean, to be fair, their, <laughs> their opponent is a guy who can read minds. Hmm. Yeah, they're, they're both, uh, have everybody, uh, on a need to know basis. But their opinion of who needs to know is skewed. Mm-hmm. Like, even their, their best fucking allies. <laughs> yeah. I mean, don't tell, ha- don't tell Harry shit, because, uh, good God, that, that boy, he has the subtlety of a mallet. Nice. Is, probably, is Harry Potter subtle? No. Yeah. Uh, we love the kid. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Rose Quartz probably, you know, gave him something for safekeeping. Rose Quartz is a Horcrux. <laughs> Wait, isn't Steven technically her a Horcrux? <laughs> yeah, that's true. Uh, oh, man. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. No, and Harry Potter is in Beach City as for, like, about two weeks. Or two weeks to a month. That's usually the time. I mean, he, he, he gets away from the jerseys and, and, and hangs out with, uh, with, and hangs out with the Weasleys or something. Or something. Or Grimwald Place or something. But yeah. I mean,. I don't know. This year, Harry's in fucking America and fucking in Beach City. It's not even a city. It's just a town with a beach. I mean, no one will find him there. Yeah, yeah. 
I don't think anyone will find me here. But Stephen does. And Stephen sees a kid his age. And he's going to make friends. Oh, they can get over their issues with their parents together. I never knew my mom. Me neither. Mine was killed by a dark wizard. Mine turned into me. Dark. (laughs) You win. That's rough, buddy. (laughs) Uh. And, you know, then they have to solve some sort of mystery or something. Yeah. Oh, and wait, if Hermione's there, then her and Stevan, uh, her and, uh, Connie can be friends. Oh, yeah, that's true. They get each other. Connie's sword training. Oh, that was great. But yeah, so, that's what I've got. So, uh, yeah. This has been an episode, and we learned quite a few things about, you know, how many, uh, people we need. And for this podcast to really uh, get off the ground. Here's the thing. I feel like we killed it. Oh, sound like we did after, after her editing. Aha! Again. Dear Brendan, you're great. We're really, really sorry. Dear Cat, you're also great because I feel like we haven't said enough about you this episode. Oh, yeah. And so is Goblin. We also love Goblin. So, in that case... Yeah, so uh, you and I, we, we did awesome. Uh, and this has been Stephen Universe, really. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we talked about it, talked about all the, about the ups, the downs, the uh, furies, these uh, clowns, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Go team. Yeah. So, as always, if you have a story to submit, head on over to nostorysacred.com slash submission. Follow us on Twitter at nostorysacred. Or send an email through contact at nostorysacred.com. Your hosts have been Alex MacDonald, Pippin MacDonald, and the cosmic energies of Brendan MacDonald and Catherine Crichton. Editing for this episode done by Brendan. Transcript done by Ashley DaCosta. Art by Jay Wolf. Show notes and transcript are available at nostorysacred.com. Thanks for listening, everyone. And please rate, review, and subscribe to No Story Sacred. You can also visit our, our Patreon page to support the show and get neat rewards at patreon.com slash no story sacred. See you next time when we talk about the 2010 movie Tangled for real this time. Until then, we're no story sacred and any story can be changed. I'm Alex. And I'm Pippin. And we're No, no story, story is Sacred. sacred.